All right, I got me with me. What's your name? Sam Limbaugh. And where are you from? Gainesville, Florida. Gainesville, go Gators. Yeah. Nadine Templer. And where are you from? I am French, but I live in Kathmandu, Nepal. I love Nepal. I've been there once. Beautiful. Yeah. People are awesome. Yeah. How do you like the food? Oh, best food in the world, best views in the world, best everything. And how long have you been in Nepal? We've been there two years. Okay. And um, how long have you been a disciple? 39 years. Okay, so I'm 37 years old. Yes. And you, okay, and where did you become a disciple? I became a disciple in the UK, in London. How long have you been a disciple? 23 years. In September. Yo, okay, 23 years, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Uh, what would you say is one of the more difficult aspects of being a disciple in a lost world? Um, you know, I was under the impression that life gets easier as you get older. <laughs> Uh, and that's not true. Now you become more resilient, which is good, but life doesn't get easier. You know, you get disappointed and, you know, we had this idea that all of our children would become Christians, for example, and some are not. Uh, we know we have a large family, we have five children, and, you know, we thought that, you know, we'd always be in the full-time ministry and then things happened and, and we're not. We are secular leaders now and, you know, so things happen, obviously, unexpected. I wish I'd been a little more prepared, but there you go. I think the world draws us into it so often. We're always being just pushed and pulled towards the rhythms of the world. And I think uh, if we're not on the offense establishing rhythms for ourselves okay. uh, with God, then we're going to establish rhythms. We're, we're being discipled by something all the time. Um, so we're not letting God disciple us. The world's definitely going to do it for us. So it's, uh, it's creating rhythms for ourselves um, to be able to be successful and draw ourselves closer to God. I really like that. I've never heard that before, but it makes a lot of sense that uh, I've often heard that you, you're going to have a Lord, whether it's Jesus or something else or you, yourself or sin or whatever. Yep. We all have a mass. We all have a Lord. And so what has helped you stay faithful through those years? remembering why I became a Christian in the first place. You know, I am very grateful for my salvation. I'm very grateful for my new life. I'm very grateful that I met Jesus. I came from a totally non-believing background and, uh, you know, I fell in love with Jesus almost 40 years ago and that still carries me. I want to follow Jesus. I want to be like him, uh, having a prayer time every day. Uh, you know, and staying close to God and listening or reading the scriptures every day. Um, yeah, I mean, that's really very simple, very basic stuff. No, I, I love that, that you're, I want to be like Jesus. I want to follow him. I want to yeah. know him. Yes. Uh, that is, that's what I consistently hear that those yeah. have, that stayed faithful, you just have to love Jesus. Right. You have to love Jesus. Jesus doesn't change, you right. know, and I know why I became a Christian and those reasons are still there. So what has been something that has helped you with that? Yeah, I think, um, I think having a Sabbath day is something that I feel like our churches don't do a ton. Um, but having a time of just stopping yourself and resting uh, weekly is preferred. Um, uh, we, we've done it in our household where we go from Friday evening to Saturday evening. A true uh, Sabbath. Yeah, we turn off the TV. Um, and we, anything we can do to worship God is what we do. So if we're getting with people or we're going to the beach or whatever it is, we're thinking about God, we're worshiping God in those moments. Uh, it's not always 100% consistent like we would want it to be, but that's, that's the whole goal with it. Uh, I think it's, uh, with me, it's the moment I wake up, I try to give myself a little bit of time in the morning to just think and process before I just jump up and look at my phone. And um, I have different, different things that kind of keep me balanced through the week on, uh, on Mondays, we have a discipleship time with me and my wife, and then on Tuesdays is our, our family discipleship time. Um, and those can be sporadic, but uh, yeah. it's just, it's finding ways to create rhythms. And uh, when you do that, you don't leave a lot of uh, things for Satan to creep into. So. Wow, okay, that's, that's awesome, man. Yeah. And talking about Jesus, Jesus often met physical needs. And I see this when I read the Gospels. Yes. He, he touched people, he healed people, he fed people. Yes. And then he teaches them about the kingdom of God. Then he teaches spiritual truths. Yeah. Like, why do, you think that's, why do you think that's what he did? I think Jesus was all about meeting needs. And in his mind, I don't think there was a difference between physical 
emotional, spiritual needs. It's just needs, you know. Uh, Jesus is about connecting and serving people, uh, and we're all poor. Some are poor physically, materially, some are poor emotionally or spiritually, and Jesus was all about meeting needs. So if you look at one day in the life of Jesus, say Mark chapter 1, 2 and 3, you know, he gets up early in the morning, he prays, he heals somebody, he teaches a lesson, he teaches again, he heals another person, and for Jesus it was all in one day, he did everything, and there was no separation between physical needs and spiritual needs. I never thought of that, that there was no separation. There you go. But Jesus met a lot of physical needs without expecting anything else. Now why? I don't know. You know, because we want to teach people, you know, we, we want to share the good news. But sometimes Jesus he healed people just to heal them. Wow. So, that's awesome. I love that. And I don't understand why, but I'm just saying that's what I see him doing, you know. If you could travel to any time within the Bible for any story or whatever, uh, which one immediately pops in your head? I don't know if I have a story. I think that I would just want to spend the three years with Jesus. Like, I just want to follow in his footsteps. I want to, like, be covered in his dust, like Bama talks about. <laughs> yeah. Like, I just want to, I just feel like that, and I'm trying to do that here, right? But yeah, yeah, yeah. being able to visualize that and just walk with him, I think would be, that'd be ultimate. So my favorite Bible story, and I would have loved to be there, was uh, in Luke chapter 7, uh, when Jesus uh, reaches out to the widow of Nain, and um, you know he sees the need in the distance, and he goes up to her, and he calls her, and he touches her, and he tells her, don't cry. And that's a very powerful, quiet, but very moving moment. I would have loved to be there. I would have loved to be there. To me, that's my favorite passage in the whole Bible. You are a hero, Nadine. Love you. <laughs> good to see you, Steven. It's so good to see you, too. Yeah, yeah man. Dude, that's a...